in this tutorial, we'll talk about how to swap two numbers. Now, to swap these two, two numbers, let's take a two, two numbers here. We'll say int a equal to 5 and int b equal to 4. Now, what I mean by swap is after this code, when I say print uh, the value of a colon, so it should print the value of a, that should be 4, and then when I print the value of b, the value of b should be uh, 5. So what I want the output as 4 and 5. Now for that, let's see how to assign, how to uh, swap. So what we'll do is we'll assign the value of uh, b to a, that means a equal to b, and we'll assign the value of b, uh, value of a to b. That means the value of b will come to a, and the value of a will come to b. Let's try to run this. Let's see what's the output. And if I run this code, you will see the output should be, it's taking some time. Come on. So we're expecting the output as 5 and 4, right? But the, unfortunately, the output is 4 and 4. It's because when you assign the value of b to a, now a becomes 4, right? And here, your value of a is already 4. That means your b again becomes 4. And that's why you're getting output as 4. What I want, when you assign the value of b to a, there should be some variable which will hold this value 5 so that in future we can assign or in the next statement we can assign the value of this value 5 to b. For that, we require something called as a temporary variable. So we'll say this variable as temp. Now, now before assigning the value of b to a, we'll assign that value of a to a variable called as temp. And then once you got the value of a into temp, you can assign the value of b into a and then the value of b will be temp. And using this, you can swap two numbers. Let's see how it works. So we have a temp variable, which is initially it is blank, and we are assigning a value of a. That means your temp, temp becomes, uh, it's 5. Here, your a becomes the value of b, which is 4, and your b, which comes from value temp, so your b becomes 5. And yes, we have swapped the numbers. Let's run this code. The output we're expecting is 4 and 5, and the output is 4 and 5. But if you focus on this code, the amount of memory we should be using is only 4 bytes and 4 bytes, which means it comes up with 16, uh, 8 bytes, right? But unfortunately, we are creating one more variable just for the swapping. That means we are wasting extra memory, right? And to save this memory, instead of going for the third variable, we'll use, we'll use some other logic. Now, one of the logic we have to implement is a straightforward formula. And the formula is this. It's a equal to a plus b. Then a equal to, uh, not a, it's b equal to a minus b. And then a equal to a minus b. Which means, let's, let's run this code. Let's uh, see how it works. So let's run this code first. And the output is, 4 and 5, we are still able to swap it, right? Again, who are familiar with this example, they might be knowing what I'm talking about. But let's say how it, how it works first. So initially, your value of A is 5 and B is 4, which means when you say the new value for A will be 9, right? And then here, your value of A is 9 now and your value of B is still 4. That means it's B equal to A which is 9 minus 4 and b becomes 5. In this code, your a value is 9 and b value is 5, so your a value will become 4. And you can see we have swapped the number. Now if, you, if you can see here, we are not wasting extra any variable. And that's the advantage of using this logic. Okay, But do you think it's it's enough or it's sufficient to, uh, we are storing, we are uh, just able to reduce the number of bytes by 4. But if we can focus here, the, the binary conversion of 5 is 101 and the binary conversion of 4 is 100, which means to, to represent this number 5 and 4, we require only 3 bits. But during the operation, 
your value of i becomes uh, sorry a becomes 9 which comes out to be the binary format of 9 is 1001 that means in the in the course of operation your result some uh, will go from 3 bits to 4 bits now let's see how to reduce or how to uh, how to save that one bit again you will say what's a big deal when you waste one bit uh, your system has lots of software, it uses multiple process, multiple process works with multiple threads, each thread works with multiple variables and if you waste one bit with one variable, you might waste a MB with one software, right. So, you can see if you can, is, is it possible, every, every time it possible just reduce the number of bits. Now, to implement that logic, what we will do is instead of this a plus sign here, we will use a caret sign. Now, what exactly this caret means is this caret means this sign caret is this sign means it is a XOR operation. Now, what exactly XOR is? Uh, XOR simply means if you have a value which is 1 and 1, the output you're expecting is 0. That means if both the values are same, it will be 0. If both the values are different, like one is uh, one is one and second is zero, the result will be one. That means if both are same, zero. If both are different, it's one. How about zero and zero? Again, they are same, so output and the output should be uh, zero. How about zero and one? Since they are different numbers, the output will be one. This is how XOR operation works. Okay. So just remember this logic of. Let me just uh, cut this code and so it's cut and paste. So this is the logic for XOR. Okay. <coughs> no, sorry. Now let's, let's implement this logic here. So it is A. A is 101. So let me write here it is 101 and let's XOR this. So XOR with a value of b which is 100 so it is 100 and the output will be so first value is 1 and 1 so the output will be 0 second is 0 and 0 the output will be uh, 0 again and last is 1 and 0 the output will be 1 because since they are both are different so it will be 1 let's go here now so your value of a is the new value is 0, 0, 0, 0,001. This should be XORed with the value of B, which is still 100. Now, if you swap, if you if you apply operation here, it will become since we have 0 and 1, it will be uh, 1. Next will be 0 and next will be 0. Uh, next will be sorry, last will be 1 because it is 1 and 0, so it will be 1. And let's go for last one. So, so it is A, which is now 001, XORed with the new value of B, which is 101. And if you write here 101, let's swap this. So it is 0 and 1, it should be, uh, it should be 1. Next is 0 and 0, second digit is 0. And last is 1 and 1, it is again 0. Now, if you see this number which is B, this value is 5 and this value here, it's 4. That means we have swapped two numbers without even wasting one bit and that's the advantage of using this XOR operation. So, as a good programmer, efficient programmer, you have to think how can we reduce the number of bits required for the code. So, this is how you can swap two numbers. So, first logic was using a temp variable, second was using a plus minus symbol and third one is using caret symbol. I hope you find out this video useful. If you like it, then press the like button. Share it with your friends or anyone who wants to make his career in Java. Do you have any suggestions regarding the content? Comment section is all yours. This is the third part of this series. For more parts from this series, subscribe our channel and hit the bell icon. Thanks for watching.